over to the Two Guam. <laughs> We're heading over to the Guam Community College, uh, where community testing is well underway by public health. And Peter Santos joins us now live. Good morning, Peter. Morning, Bree. Sorry, it's pretty windy over here. But what? yes, I believe this is day two of testing. Mm -hmm. Yes. And so it looks like a pretty good turnout, to be honest. I'm actually here with Janella. She's going to give us some of her time. So we'll go ahead and get this thing started. Okay, yes. Hey, Janella. Hey, hi, Peter. Hi, How are you doing? Bree in so, studio and Jason in studio. And Andy, if you're there. <laughs> so definitely, like, like I said, it was day two of testing. Uh, it looks like a pretty good turnout. Uh, I was talking to some people outside and they're saying that yesterday it was it was kind of timid, kind of slow. Yes, you're right. So yesterday, a little slow start yesterday. Um, after from 8 to 12, after we calculated all of our numbers, we uh, tested about 134 individuals. Of that, there were four positive cases. Um, but today, uh, we have a pretty steady flow. This morning, we had a line of cars waiting before we even opened our uh, testing uh, doors, so to speak. So a lot more cars uh, today, a lot more people showing up to get tested. We're really happy with the turnout we're seeing today. Um, you know, I think our efforts um, are working. We had a 311 text blast uh, that went out yesterday to remind people that we do have a community outreach today at GCC. So I think that that definitely worked, that extra push. Um, so we're very, very happy with the turnout today. So I, I, I heard some Manumku pretty much were coming expecting to be vaccinated here today yeah so we did um unfortunately there was um one of the news talk radio stations yesterday mistakenly announced that there was a vaccination happening uh, yesterday here at gcc um, but we did correct them we informed them that there was no vaccination happening here at gcc so unfortunately we did have some of our men up to show up thinking that there was a vaccination clinic happening here um, but we had to inform them that, that we weren't offering any vaccines here. Um, uh, but we do have plans for a vaccination clinic this week because it is the second dose. For those who received their uh, first dose on December 17, 18, and 19, they are due for their second dose this coming January 7, 8, 9. Um, so the plan is to start vaccinating them this week. Um, our most likely it's going to happen probably at Oku High School. We're still finalizing the plans. We'll officially announce it once we have that set in stone. Awesome. And so, you know, we're, we're entering in a new year and our numbers are going down. Our hospital, hospitalizations, thank God, are below the double digits. Mm -hmm. I think it's kind of a scary notion for people to be thinking that we left COVID in 2020. How important do you think testing is, you know, now? You're absolutely right. You know, just because our numbers are going down, our CAR score is below that one, that number one threshold, um, that the vaccines are here and it's an extra layer of protection that doesn't mean that we should let our guard down. And that's exactly why we're continuing to have community outreach and community testing, because just as the vaccination is important, um, testing, community testing is equally important, if not uh, just maybe even more important, because we still need to continue to, um, you know, assess our situation when it comes to COVID-19. We need to continue to understand where we're at as a community in terms of positive cases. Uh, without testing, we cannot understand uh, and know how many people are out there with the, the virus and how it's being spread, whether it's community spread or through uh, incoming travelers. Um, and if we don't know how many positive cases are out there, uh, we won't know how to contain it. So. Uh, it's very important that we continue to test our community through mass testing, uh, or if uh, you have symptomatic people or even non uh, asymptomatic people, that we get them tested. So this is one of our um, uh, fights against COVID-19 is through community testing. There's uh, mask wearing, social distancing, washing your hands, uh, and then of course the vaccine itself. So uh, these are our all of our tools against the fight of COVID-19. So speaking of COVID-19, uh, tracking of the new strain, I know Dr. Felix Cabrera was mentioning that public health was talking with CDC about 
genome testing? That's right. Yeah, so we have uh, within uh, public health, uh, our Bureau of Emerging uh, Diseases, uh, Infectious Diseases, uh, so they're also responsible for ensuring that any potential new threats such as uh, mutated um, uh, mutated uh, uh, viruses or, or any other types of viruses um, that may come to our shores, uh, that we communicate with all the um, federal experts and other experts, international experts, um, that, that uh, are tracking these types of viruses uh, to ensure that um, they're also um, aware of this, these potential threats like Guam. Um, and so it, in the event that uh, it does arrive here, um, that we uh, put a stop to it, or, or, or that we uh, are equipped with the proper measures to um, prevent it from um, being here in Guam, coming here to Guam. So definitely we're talking about the, you know, the fear of the virus traveling overseas and whatnot. Over at the airport, uh, I know they wanted to implement testing, rapid testing, and I believe the Lieutenant Governor was on the link and he was talking about the surgeon cell in the airport. We're pretty much waiting on uh, public health uh, for returning Guam resident testing. Right, yeah. So, you know, we, we have the Binex uh, now test kits. Um, we have thousands of them. Uh, we do want to put them to use, which is what we're doing through mass testing, but also we're um, talking with, uh, of course, certain cell, working with them um, to possibly use that um, as a way to test incoming travelers, but also working with the Guam Hotel and Restaurant Association. That's another way that we want to put um, our, our Binex test to good use. Um, we've also discussed the possibility of um, using them to test um, um, uh, the student population. So we're looking at uh, a wide array of use for Binex test kits um, and, and getting the community tested. Uh, as, as we continue to see low cases, we want to make sure that we're not putting, letting our guard down uh, and, and continue to test the entire population. For sure. Uh, are you aware of if di diagnostic labs has gotten taken off the Hawaii approved testing list? You know, I'm not, uh, I have not um, heard of that or I'm not tracking that, but it's definitely something that I can look into. For sure. Um, I know that when we were, um, when we signed on to be um, a trusted traveling partner, um, you know, there was a list of all the certified labs that had the NAT certification. Uh, I wasn't, uh, I'm not tracking that, but it, again, I can, I can definitely look into that. All right. And so the VAPPC meeting, those are, you know, they don't send Zoom links out to everybody. So you mind just filling us in? Sure. On, on what happened? Sure. So, um, of course, they were updated about the Moderna vaccines uh, arriving this past weekend, but also um, the VAPPC was updated on the January allocation. Public Health was approved to place an order um, for the January allocation, which is for the Pfizer vaccine, 7,800 doses. For the Moderna vaccine, we've been uh, approved for an allocation of 7,200. So for the month of January, we can place an order of a total of 15,000 vaccines. That's for both Pfizer and Moderna. And that will fully immunize 7,500 individuals. Um, that's not including uh, the Moderna vaccines that just arrived this past weekend, because what arrived this past weekend was for the December allocation, although it arrived in January. Um, the other update too is that uh, for the dialysis centers, um, there are five participating renal centers um, and their nurses will be undergoing training today so that they can begin administering the doses to uh, their dialysis patients. And they'll be using the Moderna vaccines. Um, you know, the Moderna, the storage for the Moderna is uh, it's a lot more feasible for them because it doesn't require that ultra low uh, storage. So um, that's another update that they talked about last night. Um, another update is um, <clears throat> the vaccine committee did agree that um, in terms of the age threshold, um, they recognize that um, those within the, the age range of 60 to 74 um, are 
more susceptible to severe illness when it comes to COVID-19. And so they did agree to lower the age threshold for vaccinating uh, in the phase 1C category. So previously the recommended age for phase 1C was 65 and older. So they did agree to lower the age threshold to, to 60 uh, instead of 65. Um, and they do want to prioritize um, inoculating those in phase 1C 60 and older uh, as soon as possible. So a lot sooner um, and we'll probably see that uh, much, much quicker than, um, than uh, what is the anticipated timeline for phase 1C. And we'll probably make that announcement pretty soon. Um, trying to think of what other updates there are. Uh, I know that um, uh, the public health nurses and staff are undergoing training on the uh, Moderna vaccine. So that was, um, that started yesterday and today. Um, I think that's pretty much, that's, I covered most of what was uh, discussed in the VAPPC meeting last night. So it's a 60, they lowered the age threshold for the phase 1C category to 60. Uh, the hemodialysis patients, um, nurses will begin their training for the Moderna vaccines and they'll be using the Moderna vaccines uh, for their patients. Um, and that we've been given the um, authorization for 15,000 vaccines over the month of January. Awesome. So I know the seventh is the second round, uh, the second yes. dose, right? For, for those who received it. Uh, when would be the next initial dose round that you guys are going to conduct? Uh, I believe it would be January 12th because the first clinic we did was December 17, 18, 19. And then we had that one day clinic the, uh, the following Tuesday, 17, 18, 19, um, 20, 22nd. So it would be uh, January 12th. It would be another day for a, a, a second dose clinic. So we would probably have to do January 7, 8, 9, and then January 12th for a second dose clinic. Uh, uh, for the initial dose, for the, the next round, people getting their first shot. Oh, getting their first shot. Yeah. Oh, okay. So, sorry. Yeah. I was confused by your question. Um, that is probably something we'll need to discuss further. Um, you know, moving forward is probably going to be a lot of the second dose clinics. Okay. Because um, in December was a lot of the first dose clinics. So moving forward will be a lot of the second dose clinics. Um, but, you know, what, what's great about the second dose clinics is that um, there will be opportunity for those who missed out, like the phase 1A healthcare professionals or phase 1B frontline and essential workers, to take advantage of the second dose clinics. I just created a term now to, to come uh, during the second dose clinics to get their first dose. And would the Manamku be uh, uh, looped into that? Yes, absolutely. So, if, for example, um, the 75 year old uh, and older category, if they missed out on that opportunity, they'll still be able to come in and um, get their first dose during the second dose clinic. Awesome. Well, it looks like you have a full house today. The line yes. stretches all the way down to GW. So, I'll let you get to it. Thank you so much for your time. Sure, absolutely. I appreciate it. Anytime, Peter. Thank, Thank you. you. Thanks, guys. First link of the year, right? <laughs> oh yeah, so definitely it's pretty busy over here. You have just a bunch of cars lining up. I can just show you that. So you got the whole tent set up. Free COVID-19 testing, I believe until 12 o'clock, right you know? 12 o'clock? Yes. Until 12 o'clock, come down and get your testing done. Thanks, uh, Peter. No problem, thank you guys, see you uh, soon. All right, see you soon. Again, uh, community testing, COVID-19 testing, free COVID-19 testing is one underway over at GCC. Uh, you don't have 